Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well out there as always. Today I'm gonna be doing a quick video to walk you through how to use the barometer on your Garmin Instinct watch. Now I'm using the Garmin Instinct Solar Watch. Doesn't matter if you've got the solar or non-solar or one of the tactical versions or uh, now there's a gaming version out there and there's a surfing version. The barometer should be the same on all of them. I also like to mention I'm using the watch as delivered from Garmin. I haven't made any adjustments to any of the hotkeys. So if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I've talked before about the storm alert. Some of that is going to be covered in this video because the storm alert uh, is part of the barometer settings and it has direct correlation to your barometer. So the barometer measures atmospheric pressure and the reason that's important or the reason it's kind of fun to watch is the change in atmospheric pressure can kind of help track and predict what the weather is going to do as well as if any storms are coming. And I'm going to try and walk you through all of that stuff in this video without getting too technical for you. I try and keep all my videos very short and basic just to a specific point. So uh, first let me say there's a couple different ways to get to your barometer. I'm going to be showing you the most basic way which is your ABC button. If you press and hold the ABC button, ABC stands for altimeter, barometer, and compass. It'll take you into those settings. And then you can use the up or down button to move through the different ones until you see one that looks like this, this is your barometer. So you can see in the last six hours, the atmospheric pressure in hectopascals for me has been 1,031 to 1,033. So what does that mean exactly? What it means is there hasn't been much of a change in atmospheric pressure. When you look at this graph, what you're looking for is you're looking for a rise or a decrease. Normally, if the pressure is going up, your weather is getting better. If it's going down, your weather is getting worse. So that's kind of just a quick, basic uh, look at what this is doing for you. Now, I've got mine in hectopascals. That's the default that it comes in from Garmin. I'm gonna show you how you can change that. There's different ways you can view atmospheric pressure. You can look at millibars, you can look at millimeters of mercury, inches of mercury, I'm gonna show you all that right now. While you're in this widget, all we're gonna do is we're gonna press the GPS button to look at our settings for the barometer. The very first setting, actually, let me go down and show you the unit since we're talking about that. If you press the down button, the very last option in here is pressure. And if we press GPS by selecting that, you can see I've got it on hectopascals. This is where I was talking about earlier. You can change it to millibars. You can change it to meters of mercury or inches of mercury. I'm just going to leave it on hectopascals, but if you wanted to change yours, that's how you would change it. Now let's go back up to the beginning of the options. For calibrate. So if you wanted to calibrate your barometer, you can press this and you've got a couple of different options. The first one is that if you know your current elevation, you can enter it by pressing yes. So I'm going to show you that. If I know my elevation, I can enter it right here. Not going to do that. You can use DEM. So DEM is digital elevation module, uh, digital elevation model. And what that's doing is it's using a topographical view of your GPS location to determine what your uh, barometer setting should be. That's one option you can do, or you can use your GPS, which is using your GPS coordinates to determine the uh, barometric pressure. That's up to you. I usually use GPS. To do that, you would have to turn on your GPS. Once it finds your location, it'll do a new barometer setting for you. I'm gonna go back just to save time. I'm indoors right now. If you're indoors, you wouldn't want to use DEM. DEM you would only want to use outside, again, because it's using a topographical terrain view. So that's how you calibrate. You really should, shouldn't need to calibrate your uh, barometer unless you're just getting invalid readings because of atmospheric pressure, and that can happen. Your barometer and your altimeter kind of work together, and if there's um, invalid atmospheric pressure, that can give you uh, invalid barometer readings. The next thing I'm going to show you is the plot area. So you notice, let me go back. On my screen, I'm showing the last six hours. If I want to change that, I can go into plot and you can change it accordingly. You can do six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours. So if you want to look at a trend, let's just do 24 hours. You'll notice now I can see what the barometric pressure has been doing over the last 24 hours versus six hours. So that's just a personal preference, whatever you want to set it on, that's up to you. Another setting you can do is something I've talked about before in some of my other videos, the storm alert. Storm alert I really think is a cool feature. Uh, you can turn it on or you can turn it off in here, but you can also adjust the rate. So as I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, the storm alert is based on a 
rapid change in barometric pressure. Let's go back to mine. I'm going to set my rate at, uh, I'm going to set my plot area back to six hours so I can show you guys. In the last six hours, you'll notice that the barometric pressure has only changed two hectopascals. Okay. The storm alert is looking for four and a half hectopascals per three hours. I think the default actually is four hours, but you can adjust this accordingly. I know a lot of people say, man, I've got the storm alert going off all the time. The weather's perfect. Why is it doing that? You can go in here and adjust it accordingly to what you're considering a storm. But the one thing I'll mention is that change in hectopascals doesn't necessarily mean that rain is coming or a bad storm's coming. Sometimes it can mean that high winds are coming. It's, it's basically just measuring a change in hectopascals at a certain rate over the previous three hours. So if you want to adjust that, play with it a little bit, see if you get a better storm alert uh, for your area, you can do that here. I'm going to set mine back to four hectopascals for, per three hour period. So again, if my barometric pressure changes uh, four hectopascals in three hours, whether up or down, it's going to send me a storm alert notification. So that's how you would adjust that. And then you can go down here. We've already looked at the pressure, but for watch mode, I've got mine set to auto. So what auto means is it's going to use both barometric pressure and the altimeter to determine my barometric readings. You can go in here and change that by just choosing to use the altimeter or just choosing to use the barometer. Auto is going to use both of them. My recommendation is leave it on auto, but depending on your situation or what you're doing, you might find better results using uh, the altimeter or just the barometer. And that's pretty much it. Last but not least is the uh, units. We talked about that before if you want to change from hectopascals to something else. That's pretty easy. Uh, let me go back to the main screen. The one thing I was going to tell you is the ABC button is always going to be your altimeter, barometer, and compass. So there's really not a reason to ever set those as widgets. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm on the main screen now. Well, if I press the uh, up or down button, it'll go through all of my widgets. You'll notice I've got the th uh, thermometer in there, solar intensity, barometer, altimeter. Those, uh, they're, they're really not needed as widgets because they're always going to be available by using the ABC button. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, the other thing is the storm alert. You can get to it a few different ways. As always, if you press and hold the set button, assuming you're using it as delivered from Garmin, you can get to your alerts that way. So if you want to quickly turn off the storm alert, you can do it here versus going into your barometer. But I hope that's not too confusing. I hope it gave you a little bit of information about how your barometer works and how you can change some of the uh, preferences with the barometer. As always, if you got questions, post them in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out. And thank you for watching.